Hi, my name is Walt Chappell. I'm a candidate for the state school board in Topeka from District 8 right here in Wichita. Now today we're standing right in front of East High School, one of the oldest high schools in the state of Kansas and one of the biggest here, of course, in Wichita. I actually was a student here. I went to Roosevelt, which is on the left, and I was a student here and graduated at East High in 1959. Now right up the street is where I used to live, Murdoch and Grove. Walked down the street here on Grove every day for five years. That was a good opportunity to get to know the neighborhood and the people here in this part of town. Now one of the reasons we're standing here today is to let you know that as a candidate for the State Board of Education, it's very important for me to be able to share with you some of my background and some of my interest in students. This is what it's all about, is how kids learn and how we prepare them for the future. I've had an opportunity not only to go to East High, but also to Wichita State University and then on to KU. I got my doctorate at Michigan State University in 1970 and have been out as a professional in the field, both business and education, for the last 30 years. So it's really important for me to be able to serve now in the capacity as your representative in Topeka and hopefully do a very good job of uh, dealing with some high priorities. Now one of the things we wanted to do today is to give you a first-hand view of not only this school, but how some of the priorities that I'm interested in will affect kids in the 21st century. One of the main things that the school board has been dealing with for the last four or five years is what they call career and technical education. Now those are very key concepts. What we have is a high level of expertise in the job market these days. We're competing on a global scale and what we have to do is make sure our kids come out of high school with employable skills. So starting in the middle schools like Roosevelt, Robinson, Meade, Curtis and so forth, we need to offer choices so kids have a chance to see firsthand what various careers are available to them. And then secondly, we need to provide some of those courses in the curriculum that give them hands-on experience. So when they're out there they're able to see firsthand, all right, here's what it takes to be a welder. Here's what it takes to be a computer technician. Here's what it takes to be a TV producer. Here's what it takes to do the plumbing and pipe fitting that's required in the 21st century. Now, as we offer those jobs, those opportunities for kids, we need to work together with businesses, the labor unions, the leaders in our business communities to make sure that we're providing relevant experiences, that our kids are learning actually things that they can apply and use on the job once they graduate. So that's a very high priority of mine. Secondly, I'd like to deal with the, the big achievement gap. We have here at East High and some of the other high schools in Wichita, a large number of kids who aren't learning the basics. They haven't gotten the math, the English, the basic understanding of some of the concepts we want them to learn in the 21st century. For them to be able to go out and get a job, be able to apply their skills, they're going to need to know some things that all of us take for granted, but obviously have to be learned. So that achievement gap is important, but not just to pass what they call multiple choice exams. Uh, you know, the state exams are fine, and they give us some measure, but to say that we're going to measure test-taking behavior as some understanding of how a kid actually is learning and how well they've learned it, in my mind, doesn't do a very good job. So I want to look very closely at the achievement tests we're offering, make sure that they are in fact testing the behaviors we want kids to learn, and be able to apply those skills that are necessary for the employers in the 21st century to actually use. Now a third thing that goes along with that very closely is the dropout rate. In some of our schools we have as much as 40 percent of the kids that enter ninth grade but never graduate as 12th graders. Now that is a tremendous loss, not only for the kids and their parents, but for society as a whole. You go down here to this jail down here in downtown Wichita, the Sedgwick County Jail, 80% of the prisoners, that's 80%, do not have a high school diploma. They haven't been able to stick it out, learn enough to be able to get through, graduate, let alone have skills that they can use to get a job. Now without that, they have an opportunity to learn, but they do not have an opportunity to really uh, make good use of their time if they're just tuning out school and, and going on their way. So what I'm hoping to do is make sure that the curriculum itself 
starting in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade is very relevant. Gets the kids excited, gives them hands-on experience, gives them options and choices so they can go into the class you meet today and look forward to coming back to school the next day. Now that's extremely important for us. We've got to make sure these kids not only close the achievement gap, but also have an opportunity to stay in school long enough to graduate with employable skills. Now to do that, we're going to have to retain and recruit more of our teachers. We have a big teacher shortage coming up. About 35% of our teachers are going to be retiring in the next five years. Now that means that we've got very few opportunities for our kids to really learn with the staff we already have if we can't bring more teachers in the front end of the system. Now presently we are already short of science and math and technology teachers. We have to open up our certification processes in Topeka. The State Board of Education deals with that on a regular basis. They've just come up with some new regulations. We need to look at those very carefully and see if we can also open the door for people who have content knowledge, engineers, architects, computer programmers, current faculty at uh, various colleges and universities, and allow those people to come into our K-12 classrooms and teach. Now that's extremely important. We can't have classrooms empty with no teachers and students to learn. Now one of the things that's dear to all of our hearts is costs. Right now the State Board of Education oversees a budget of 4.6 billion dollars a year. That's the amount of money that the state legislature appropriates every year to our K-12 schools. Another third, approximately two-thirds of the state budget actually goes for education kindergarten through graduate school. But the K-12 budget, 4.6 billion plus all of the billions of dollars from the local property taxes, adds up to a tremendous amount of money for classroom instruction. We have to get results. We have to make sure our kids are learning. We need to know that the product we provide to the employers is actually quality and able to meet the demands of the 21st century. And if we do that, then we're going to be able to hopefully bring down property taxes while we look for other ways to fund education through sales and income tax. Right now the burden on the property taxpayer, in my opinion, is too much, both at the local level and from the amount of money we gain at various other points in the, in the system. So I'm going to ask for your vote. I'm going to ask for an opportunity to serve you here in Wichita. I'm really glad for an opportunity to share these ideas with you in video so you get to know me as a person. And come to my website. You'll see more information there at the website, which is chapel, the number four, ksboe.com. Thank you for watching today and I appreciate it very much. God bless you.